Hi. Um, don't know entirely how I want to start this. Yes, Rosie. My very vocal cat. Um, my name's Diane, and since 2014, so what's that? 2014. Eight years. Yes, Rosie. You're talking to do. This is my crazy vocal cat. Uh, so from 2014 onwards, I have, well, probably before that, past 10 years probably, I have dealt with a condition called fibromyalgia. Um, from my layman's understanding, it is a connective tissue disorder that expresses pressure as pain to your brain. Yes, Rosie, you've got so much to say right now. I know, she's nuzzling the phone. Um, and it sucks. <laughs> So fibromyalgia can be different for anyone, like some people can hardly walk, um, some people just find it hard to think and rest, um, some, some people get it more like me where I have sort of mobility and joint issues. Uh, so I get it a lot in my wrists and my hips and there's a lot of co-conditions that go with it so I get brain fog you can't think straight um, you can't think of the words you want to use you are so tired that you just can't think straight like being drunk all the time without the without the joys of the buzz and all that so um my it started in my right wrist I presumed that that was repetitive strain because I've always had office jobs where you use computers and your right hand is the clicking hand typically and I just presumed that I was overdoing it so, um, and that all happened when my, when I got my dream job with the cabinet office, um, and basically stopped that in its tracks. Um, and I got an occupational health referral and then I went to my GP and they referred me to a new, uh, a rheumatologist who basically poked me in lots of different places and said does this hurt does this hurt does this hurt and if I got a certain amount of places like the majority that hurt then I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia because it's basically a diagnosis of elimination so there's no like one blood test that says yes you have it it's more like right we'll rule out all this other stuff and then you have it and um oh, excuse the fingers oh by the way that's my massive to-do list of stuff around the house um diy things so then i got referred to a course in bath uh, where there is apparently great services for things like fibromyalgia um, and chronic pain conditions but to get there and then do stuff so for example they had like a hydro pool and uh, physio sessions and things like this and that would have been perfect if it wasn't for the fact that driving for an hour to get there totally wiped me out <laughs> so that's a big part of fibromyalgia uh, managing your energy levels so 
I gave up on doing the whole bath thing because that was too much for me and um, found a local course because I live in Wiltshire so that's um, a lot of mental health services and group sessions are provided by Lyft Psychology here um, and I did a few of them because I was off work for a while with stress and anxiety a lot of that is around fibro and buying my own house and trying to get it refurbished for basically from the ground up and a bunch of other stuff um, and lift psychology does a few different courses but they are very much a muchness they're very samey so a lot of it a lot of the courses, whether it's a stress one, whether it's a heart condition one, whether it's a fibromyalgia one, is very much about being kind to yourself, looking after yourself, more exercise, better eating, that kind of thing. But the best part is the condition specific sessions. So learning to, to pace yourself was the one for fibro. Uh, that I found most useful so realizing that when you have a good day don't go boom and bust and you know overdo it because then you will have a worse bad day the following day so trying to even those energy levels out I don't know that I've necessarily done that because until recently I had two jobs, two kids, two dogs, two cats and the whole and a partner and a house and yeah too much too much on your plate um, I've quit one of the jobs now so that's one thing down but you know it's I have a lot on my plate for a normal person never mind someone with a long-term disability it took me a long time to really accept that this was not gonna go away I still do get upset about that sometimes like I'll never be healed I'll never be right again some days I wake up and I feel fine it doesn't last forever though um, so Another common problem with fibromyalgia is sleep disturbance so that covers a whole bunch of stuff like whether you struggle to get to sleep, whether you struggle staying asleep, whether you wake up 10 times a night, whether you're only able to sleep for a few hours and then you're fully awake. Uh, for me getting to sleep is troublesome and staying asleep because it doesn't help that my partner gets up crazy early in the morning um, and also like the anxiety and uh, depression that I mean I had some of that before but it's worse with fibro because you just your brain is always drained like I have some serious sleep debt <laughs> written all over my face um, so yeah ideally I would sleep for maybe 15 hours a day non-stop without it being broken up but unfortunately me and my partner are snorers as well so that doesn't help so yeah I have very disrupted sleep um, and like I said another thing that goes along with this is you're constantly drained you're constantly trying to catch up whether that be catch up with your daily tasks of living or catching up on sleep there's always something pressing to do um, so anxiety and depression kind of just go along with it because you're just sad you couldn't get the things done you wanted to do that you didn't have time for your hobbies because you're just trying to cope with life and getting on with life or looking after the kids or whatever um, yeah and they're just exacerbated by it 
I found that cutting caffeine quite low has helped with the anxiety because I think I had like self-induced anxiety from the amount of caffeine I was taking in in a day like I'd just be oh, jittery and, and buzzing all day long so I think reducing the caffeine really helped obviously fibro being a joint problem my mobility isn't great so getting the exercise in is tricky so I have put on weight and plus a few of my medications cause increased appetite which is awesome, as if we didn't have enough problems having had two kids and not being beach body ready. <laughs> Wasn't hard enough. Um, so yeah, I've had some other conditions come on. I sound like a hypochondriac. Um, some other conditions come since the fibro so like I have partial hearing loss in this ear um, I've re more recently discovered I have PCOS which is polycystic ovarian syndrome which is just hard to say um, but that inc like the body hair is a lovely one for that um, keeping the weight on is another symptom of that so that's like four or five things against my trying to weight lose weight is you know got a few things against it already um what else is there oh i've had wicked hemorrhoids since having kids that's awesome but i think that's more a childbirthy thing rather than a you know unfit unfitness thing or you know be an unhealthy thing um yeah the asthma eczema hay fever bits that I have <laughs> um I had before the fibromyalgia they say that fibromyalgia can be caused by a dramatic issue beforehand so like if you've had a massive amount of stress like a death in the family or something they say the only thing that happened just before I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia was I had shingles on my back which I didn't catch until it was too late so I had like pain in my back for 18 months two years just awesome and you know old people get shingles where their immune system has given up on them but my immune system has been trying to kill me since day one with the hay fever asthma eczema thing so you know I'm pretty used to the asthma uh, the immune system trying to get me um so yeah the shingles just came when I was kind of run down uh and not looking after myself very well um yeah so that's kind of where I am at the moment I don't know if I'm going to publish this because it's a lot of personal information but I just felt the need to talk about the fibro and like how it affects me day to day like just sitting here now hurts um, and at work I have like a a special chair and a footrest which everyone gets super jealous about like oh yeah I'd rather not need the footrest I'd rather not need the specialist chair I'd rather my body wasn't trying to get me at the age of 36 um, and you know a specialist mouse and a soft touch keyboard and dragon naturally speaking so I don't have to type so much and there's a lot and every time I change jobs I have to get these things sorted which is a whole other video probably oh, excuse me I've got an awful cold that's another thing you just get everything because your immune system is always mad it's either overreacting or underreacting and no in between so yeah I catch everything 
weirdly, I have not caught COVID, which I'm utterly shocked at because, you know, two kids, which is like two walking Petri dishes coming back and forth every day, still not caught COVID. Um, so, yeah, weird. Um, maybe my jabs have stood up to the COVID because I've had three now. Is it three? Yeah, something like that. Um, I presume with the COVID we're going to go to like flu jabs where we have a booster every year, but we shall see. UK government's been really odd about COVID at the moment, like it doesn't exist anymore, which is hilarious because now everyone's getting sick. Surprise. Um, so yeah, I'm going to sign off because I'm just babbling. But yeah, it'd be interesting to find out how you experience fibromyalgia, if you have it the same way as me, if you get it as in the same joints as me. Yeah. Bye.